Morning students, I welcome you all for another lecture on the course Computer Architecture and Organization. So in this topic, I am going to discuss about the types of read-only memories. In the last class, we discussed about the introduction part regarding to the memory elements. In this class, I am going to discuss about the purely read-only memories. Right. So both SRAM and DRAM chips are volatile, which means that they lost the stored information if power is turned off. In the last class, we discussed something regarding to SRAM means static random access memory as well as DRAM means dynamic random access memories. These are two random access memories are volatile memories. What is the meaning of these volatile memories? The meaning of these volatile memories is the information present in the memory location was lost when the power is turned off. Once the power is turned off, automatically the information got already stored in the memory locations that was lost. So that is the meaning of volatile memory. But so many applications they want, uh, the information present in the memory location must be as it is or it is constant, irrespective of power failures. Then what we have to do is we have to go and design another variety of memories which are called non-volatile memories. So your read-only memories comes under that non-volatile memories. What is the meaning of non-volatile memories? Once you write something onto the memory locations, it cannot be lost irrespective of power failures. If power is lost, there is no chance for losing of information which already stored in the locations. So that meaning of non-volatile memories, right? A different types of non-volatile memories have been developed as usual. Read operation performed on these memories, that means read-only memories is the same as performed on SRAM as well as DRAM. The way how we are doing a read operation in the locations of static random access memory as well as in a dynamic random access memory, in the same way we do a read operation on this read-only memories or non-volatile memories. But coming to the write operation is completely different. So, but a special writing process is needed to place the information into the memory. So read operation is same as SRAM as well as a DRAM, but write operation is completely different. Why? The reason for this is, in case of read-only memories, these are non-volatile memories. But if you go for SRAM and DRAM, those are the volatile memories. Once you are writing something on the locations of read-only memories, it must be permanent. It must be constant. If I want to do that, definitely your writing process is completely different. So that here our conclusion is, although the writing process we are used for the case of SRAM and DRAM is completely different from whatever the write process we are using in read-only memories. Yes. So we can go and see how a memory cell looks like. A memory which only supports a reading of a stored data, such memories are called read-only memory OEM. It means if a memory purely supports only one operation, which is a read operation, no doubt such memory what we can call is read-only memory. If it supports only read-only memory, how its a memory cell looks like? See guys, this is a read-only memory, memory cell. So this memory cell consists, this is a mass transistor, along with we have some a switching arrangement, that is, I can call here it is a P. So, if I want to write something onto this, or if I want to read something from this, how I can do this read as well as write operations, that we will go and discuss. So, here there are two lines, one is a bit line and second one is word line. Fine, you observe this, another end of this P is a connected to ground and here we have a mass transistor. Logic value Z, 0 is a store in the cell if the transistor is connected to ground at the P. Otherwise, 1 is stored. What this is? 
So the, this memory cell can hold logic zero internal to this. When it happens, no doubt this P connection is uh, connected to a gram. It means there is a connection between a transistor and a gram through this P. Then and only I can say that this particular memory cell can hold logic value zero. If it is not like this, then automatically I can say that the memory cell can contain logic one. When it happens, the simple thing is there is no connection between this ground and this mass transistor. Automatically, I can say that the memory cell contains logic one. So one thing again, you remember, friends, this memory cell can contain logic zero. When it was happened is this ground is connected to transistor T through this P. Once this uh, ground was not connected to T through this P, I can say that this memory cell contains logic 1. You have to remember that. That's what I'm saying as a first point. Bit line is a connected through a resistor to the power supply. That means this is your bit line. This bit line was a connected to VCC. This is a power supply signal VCC through a resistor. So once it is the scenario, if it is a logic one present here, once this transistor is on, then automatically this ground connection is not connected to transistor through the P. I can say that the your the memory cell contains logic one. If there is no P connection, if there is a P connection, then automatically here the cell consists of logic zero. So here you have to remember power supply VCC was connected to this memory cell through this uh, bit line to this uh, resistor R. So that is the meaning of this. To read the state of the cell, the whole line is activated, thus a transistor switch is closed and the voltage on the bit line drops to near zero if there is a connection between transistor and a ground. If there is no connection to ground, the bit line value is equal to 1. What is this? So here we clearly says that why we are doing a read operation? If you are doing a read, the state of the memory cell, the whole line is activated. What's the whole line? So this is the whole line is activated. Once the whole line is activated, then the signal is given to the gate terminal of this mass transistor. If this uh, terminal of a gate, a tra gate terminal of mass transistor is a uh, logic one, then automatically this transistor is a uh, turner. Once it's a turner and there is a ground connection is there between this transistor and the ground through this P, then I can say that this memory cell value is equal to zero that I was to read. So if there is no connection between this ground and this mass transistor, then automatically I can say that the logic one was stored in that particular memory cell. That is the meaning of this particular statement. And here there is a cell circuit at the end of the bit line generates the proper output value. So here there is a sense circuit was present. Here, here we have a sense circuit. This sense circuit produces the output value which is a 1 or a 0 that was a presenting in this memory cell. So that's what we are saying here. A sense circuit at the end of the bit line generates a proper output value that means 1 or a 0. Data are written into ROM when it was a manufacturer. When we are manufacturing our memory chips, that incident only, I'm going to write what all the information I would like to store in the memory locations. So that is why these are memories, these are the only memories I can call as mask ROM. Because based on the information what I am going to copy on the memory location, according to that I have to prepare the mass in the making of my read-only memory chip. That's why these are called as mask ROM. And here I would like to add one more point that is that these read-only memories are mask ROMs. I can also call as OTPs, means one-time programmable memories. So one time programmable memories, that means once you write something onto any memory location at the time of manufacturing, it is not possible even to alter a single bit of a memory location. So that's why these memories, what I can call is OTPs, one time programmable memories. 
So, in this case, uh, we have so many different varieties of read-only memories that comes up to the picture. Once we are, we are not happy with uh, the first variety of read-only memories which are master RMU, what the user was expecting is, if I want to able to program my memory chips whenever I want, uh, if there is such type of provision, it is an advantage compared to master RMU. So, in that case, uh, we are going to add different features to read-only memories. So, that's why we have a different varieties of read-only memories that uh, now comes out to the market. In that, the first variety is called uh, ROM, means uh, programmable read-only memory. And second one is EPROM, means erasable programmable read-only memory. And third one is EPROM, it is also called as e square prom that means uh, array electrically erasable programmable read-only memory and last one is a flash memory. Now, we are going to discuss these varieties of read-only memories one after other. I start with PROM. PROM means programmable read-only memory. This read-only read memory was a programmed by user. It is a beautiful thing. So, in previous case in mass memory, the read-only memories are programmed by the manufacturer. When we are making master RVM, that incident only, we have to program the memory locations what present in that memory chips. So that's why in case of master RVM, programming also done by the manufacturer based on the information what was provided by the user. But coming to the PROM case, it is completely different. These are PROMs are programmed by the user, not by the manufacturer. Whenever the user wants that incident, the user can program this uh, read-only memories. So that's why this is called a programmable read-only memory. The programmability is achieved by inserting a fuse at a point P in ROM cell. This programming is achieved if you remember the previous case a diagram that is basic memory cell of a read-only memory. When we have some type of a switch connection like this at a P, now that can be replaced by a fuse like this. A fuse can be placed between a mass transistor and a ground signal. And based on the information what we are going to copy down to that particular memory cell, either you bound this fuse or you are not bound that particular fuse. So that's the meaning of this particular one. Before it is a program, the memory contains all zeros. Before doing a programming by the user, all the locations of a memory holds logic zero. Why? Because there is a fuse connection is exists between your mass transistor and ground itself, right? It is like this. We have a mass transistor, this end you have more line, and this end you have a bit line. It is a connection is like this. So here, once we have this a fuse connection, no doubt the value that was present in this particular memory cell is equal to logic zero. So that's why here what I can say is before it is a program, the memory contains all zeros. Next, the user can insert once at the required locations by burning out the fuses at these locations using high current pulses. For example, if I want to copy logic one in this particular memory cell, what simply I have to do is I burn this fuse. How I could have burned this fuse? Simply by sending off high current pulses. Once if I send high current pulses through this uh, memory cell, then automatically this particular fuse was burned. Once it was, fuse was burned, there is a no connection between a ground and a mass transistors. Automatically, this cell contains logic 1. That is the meaning of this. And one more important thing is, once you burn the fuse, it is not possible again to establish a fuse connection between mass transistor and ground. That's why this process is irreversible. Once you burn it, there is no chance. Again, you have to make a fuse connection between a mass transistor and ground. So from this entire thing, again, in our mind, we may get uh, one important information regarding to this uh, programmable read-only memory. That was, uh, this is also OTP. It is also one-time programmable memory. Why? Because once you burn the fuse, it is not possible. Again, you get back that a fuse between a mass transistor and ground itself. So that's why your ROMs also, again, OTPs like a master RVM. But what is the difference between master RVM and ROM? 
in case of mass carbon the programming was done for those memory chips when we are making that memory chips and the programming also done by manufacturer of the memory chips based on the information what is provided by user but coming to the prom case in the prom case programming was not done at manufacturing of memory chips and second thing these uh, memory chips are programmed by user whenever the user wants so that is the difference between previous one and this again here also the disadvantage what that was a continuous from mass away to promise it is also OTP one time programmable memory that you have to remember so next PROMs provide a faster and considerably less expensive approach because they can be programmed directly by the user yes. this is, PROMs are faster that is number one and considerably less expensive why because these memory chips are programmed by user user can program this in order to program this memory by user it requires what a user can require is the user can require a prompt programmer with the help of a prompt programmer only the user can program prompt chips I repeat the user can program prompt chips with the required information with the help of prompt programmer so next this memory also one time programmable memory like master way that's what I'm saying so what's the meaning of this once any memory location was a program with some fixed bit pattern it was unable to alter that memory location information so once it is OTP once it is a one time programmable memory once you write something onto any particular location of memory it is not possible to alter at least a single bit of that location because it is a one time programmable memory we are programming the memory locations by sending off a current pulses through the memory cells where we want a logic one by simply burning of a fuse in that corresponding memory cell that you have to remember friends regarding to prom and what are next one the next one is a ap rom so i can call it is ap rom i know what is a prom is here i would like to add an additional feature that is e e represents arisable arisable programmable read only memory so what a user can expect from previous memory I can able to program my memory chips I was happy it is not done by a manufacturer but if I write something onto any memory location I was unable to alter at least a single bit so that what a user can think is is there any possibility for me to alter the information what I already stored in a memory location if I want to rewrite any particular location what I have to do is first of all I have to erase already what all the information that was present in the memory location from the thoughts we make uh, the next variety of read-only memory that was arisable programmable read-only memory that means these memories are not arisable these memories are not uh, OTPs because here this memory supports arising function once we arise any location of the memory is it possible to rewrite it that particular location so that once we have a rewrite facilities there then obviously we can call such memories are not OTPs those are rewritable memories but at the same time you have to remember friends these are rewritable memories at the same time it is a non-volatile memories that means in respect of power failures once you write something onto any memory location that is as it is there is no chance for losing of information on any particular location that's the meaning of non-volatility non-volatility so that here this uh, erasable programmable read-only memory supports erasing a function along with the programmability at the same time this is also comes under non-volatile memories that you have to remember in this type of ROM the stored data to be erased and new data to be loaded so that means if I want to change any particular location of a data I can erase that location information after that I can rewrite it so that is the meaning of this but here important thing you have to remember arise of data in EPROM chips requires exposure of chip to UV light or ultraviolet light, light in order to erase the information what already present in this memory chips if I want to do this simply I have to go and expose this memory chips to UV light 
that means we make our memory such that I can erase the information of the memory locations by simply exposing of that memory chips to UV light. That I can explain next point. For this reason, EPROMs are mounted in packages that have transparent window. That means on the top of IC there was a window. Once that window was exposed to UV light, automatically the information present on that memory chip was erased. That means here it is very clear friends that is in case of uh, EP-ROMs erasing it will support there is no doubt that erasing will do with the help of UV light technology but erasing was uh, done at chip level that means we are not erasing a single bit or we are not erasing a single byte or we are not erasing a group of bytes that is nothing but a block we are erasing entire chip that means what already the information present on the memory chip that I was arranged simply by exposing of that memory chips to EV light. That's it. In this memory, arranging was done at chip level. That's what I'm saying. Arranging was done at chip level. I was unable to erase a single byte or a block of bytes or a single byte. It is not possible for me. I can erase whole chip itself. Even if I want to alter a single byte, that you have to be careful. That is itself the problem of our EP ROM. We are arising at entire chip level. So to overcome the problem, I shifted to the next one that is EEPROM. That means electrically arisable programmable read-only memory. That means your arising technology was electrical technology. So the significant disadvantage of EP ROM is that a chip must be physically removed from the circuit for reprogramming and it is entire contents are erased by UV lights. What is a major problem with EP ROM? So one thing is I was unable to alter a single bit or a byte or block of bytes. Instead of that, I can arrange the whole thing what already present in that memory chip. It is not possible for me if that memory chip was present in a circuit. If I want to alter the information in EP ROM chip, first of all I have to remove that memory chip from the circuit itself. Later, I have to go and expose it to UV light. By doing of this, I can erase all the information what already present in the memory chip. It is a time-taking process and it is somewhat complex procedure. So to overcome that, that is we consider as a main disadvantage. To overcome that, I shifted to this APLT square prop, that is electrically erasable programmable memory. This memory can erase and program electrically. If I doing this, I need not be remove my memory chip from the circuit if I want to do arising process. So, the arising the contents of this memory, it cannot be removed from the circuit. This is an advantage. But in previous case, uh, I must be removed my memory chip from the circuit. Then and only I can go and arise it by simply exposing our memory chips to UV light. But in case of E square prompt, I need not be remove my memory chip from the circuit itself. So, that's it, another advantage. In this memory, arising was done at important one that is at a byte level it is not at entire chip level it was arising at byte level but in case of EP ROM arising was done at chip level that is another advantage but the major disadvantage is that different voltages are needed for arising writing and then reading the stored data what's the problem with this E square ROM I have to go and use a different voltages. One voltage is for arising, another uh, voltage is for writing, and another voltage is for reading. That means I need a three different voltages. One for reading, one for writing, and another one for arising. This is a major problem with this. And if your arising was done at byte level. To overcome all these things, I shifted to the last variety of read-only memory, which is called a flash memory. So generally this flash memory, I can call as E square prom. Why? Because here it's a technology is a similar to E square prom. That means in case of flash memory also, arising was done with the help of electrical technology. And writing also done with the help of electrical technology. That's why the flash memories are also called as one type of, or it is a similar to E square proms. So that's the meaning of this. In E square prom or E prom, it is possible to read and write the contents of a single cell but in this memory it is possible to read the contents of a single cell but only possible to write entire block of cells that's the meaning of this in case of e square block i do reading and writing at a byte level that means 
A byte consists of a group of cells. Those cells I can do a read as well as a write. But coming to is flash memory. The thing here is I can do a read operation on a byte, but I want reading to do arising on a byte itself. Here I do arising at a block level. Once I do arising at a block level, automatically I can rewrite a, that a block. That's the meaning of this particular statement. Right. So for you to write the previous contents of a block are arised. If I want to write something new information onto any particular locations, first of all, what I have to do is I have to arise it. So in case of my flash memory, arising was done at the block level so that first of all I have to arise already what all the information present in the locations. Thereafter only I can do the write operation. That's the meaning of this. The flash devices have a greater density. This is a very, very important one, which leads to higher density and a lower cost per bit. The beautiful advantage of flash memory is the density is high. Once the density is high, cast per bit is low. What the user can expect from the memories are the memory size must be larger as well as the cast of a memory cell is less. These are the two things what a user can expect. Those are two things the user can get from this flash memories. This is an important thing. It requires a single power supply, voltage and consume less power in that operation. The other advantage is it consumes less power compared to the remaining memory elements. That is also an advantage from user point of view. While the selection of our read-only memories in their applications. And next, the typical application of this memory were handheld computers, cell phones, digital cameras, MP3 music players, etc. Where we can observe these are flash memories. We observe our flash memories in different applications like handheld computers, comma, cell phones, and digital cameras, and then MP3 music players. In these things, we regularly identify our flash memory elements. So that is an important thing. So I hope uh, you understand the read-only memories concept. So we started at a master RVM. Now we are using a flash uh, read-only memories. So first, master RVM. Then we identify some disadvantage that is uh, programming also done by manufacturer at a manufacturing time. So that we identify the major disadvantage and the second the disadvantage of that particular memory was it is uh, again a uh, OTP on time programmable memory. To overcome that we shifted to the second one that is a programmable read only memory. We overcome only one of the disadvantage that is uh, in case of Trump. The programming was not done by manufacturer, it was done by user itself whenever the user want with the help of an hardware circuit which is called a prop programmer. But still that prop also OTP and thereafter we shifted to EEPROM that is a read only memory which supports arising facility also. So once if I want to arise anything, I can arise it, later I can go and rewrite a new information on the arising locations that we do with the help of UV light technology. And thereafter we shifted to square prop and we finally shifted to the flash memories. I hope you understand this concept types of read only memories. We will go and discuss another important topic in next class. Thank you for patient listening.